Hi, I'm Stephanie Raza. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Tropical Milkweed Step-by-Step -step Instructional Video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint the tropical milkweed using Nature Sketch Creates Step-by-Step -step Painting Instructions. First, collect all your materials and make sure they're ready to go. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, relax, have fun, and don't worry too much if you think you may have made a mistake. Please help support the creation of these videos by clicking the like button, subscribing to this YouTube channel, and checking out www.naturesketchcreate.com. Let's get started. Step one, transfer the image to the watercolor paper. First, make sure you tape your transfer image to the back of the watercolor paper. Then take your graphite transfer paper, dark side down, light side up, and be careful because it can smudge a little bit, and just gently place that on your watercolor paper and lightly place that down. And then just check a corner to make sure you have the right pressure. So you kind of want a medium pressure. And you want to be able to see these lines after you add the watercolor. So you want it to be kind of on the darker side. So go ahead and go throughout and just transfer all these lines by tracing right over them. And you can start anywhere you like. Just make sure you don't put too much pressure from your hand onto the paper to prevent any unwanted graphite transfer marks. And just take your time and relax. If you get interrupted at any point, you can come back to this. You don't have to complete it all in one sitting. And maybe put on a podcast or some music or an audiobook, whatever you like. Just take your time and relax and try to zen out a little bit while transferring these lines. Once you have all the lines transferred, go ahead and check to make sure. And I like to start in one part and then move my eye to the next and just kind of go through the image as I flip it up, the paper up and down, kind of like a flip book to see what I missed. I always end up missing something. Or several somethings. And if you don't find what you missed in this step, that's fine. You can always add it later. This is just a sketch too. So if the lines aren't exactly in the right spot or you trace them a little outside, like right here, it's a little bit messy here because I traced these lines twice. That's totally fine. This is just a sketch. They're meant to be guidelines and not an absolute. And all the mistakes make it very unique to you and make it a perfectly imperfect painting. And lastly, you can go ahead and transfer the common name and the scientific name if you like. And since my pencil tip is a little bit smaller than the text for the common name, I just trace the inside of each letter to outline it. And then I'll write right over the common name because my pencil tip is about the same size. And if you want, you can also transfer the whole punch lines if you plan to add this to your sketchbook. And if you decide to do that another time, that's fine too. You can add it anytime. It doesn't have to be done now. And when you have all those lines transferred, then remove your graphite transfer paper. You can use this over and over and over. And then gently remove the tape from the back of the watercolor paper. And then take the tape off of the transfer image and keep that so you can protect your painting while you're painting it. And uh, save the tape and reuse it if you don't have too much paper. If you have a lot of paper that came off while you from your transfer image when you removed it, you can 
compost it or throw it in the trash. Take your kneaded eraser, make sure you have a nice light gray spot and remove any unwanted graphite transfer marks. The graphite paper leaves a little bit behind and uh, you can just kind of erase those off. If you need a stronger eraser, you can also try your pencil eraser. That's okay if you have a few smudges, this is just a sketch. You can also lighten the lines a little bit by just kind of dabbing over them. And you might do that here. When you have the transfer lines where you like them, you can go ahead and move on to step two. Step two, paint in milkweed green and yellow. So take the 34H turquoise blue, shake it up to make sure that the paint pigment is well mixed. Sometimes it settles in the bottle. One, two, and two drops of the Gamboge 2H, shake that up as well. One, two. And if you're using a regular brush, you can just add a little bit of water of your cup to the palette. And if you're using the water brush, just kind of put a little pressure on the barrel of your brush and it should work. Get a little bit of water out. And then take that to the side and add lots of water to it. And then clean it off on your towel. Pick up a little bit of that paint, test it out on your paper. And you can see it looks like the medium concentration color. So take a little bit of that color, take it to the side and add lots of water to it. Not too much, just a bit more. Dab it on your towel and then pick some more up. Dab it lightly on the towel and then to your paper to test the color. Looks like I need a little bit more color, but not a lot. So dab it a little bit into the darker, more concentrated spot on my palette and then bring it over to this light color. Dab it on my towel again, pick up a little bit, dab it lightly on the towel and then check it on my paper. That looks really good to me. And I can take that, pick up a good amount on my brush, dab it lightly on my towel and apply it to all of the leaves and stems. And I'm gonna start on the left and move to the right and you can use your transfer image to protect your paper from any smudges from your hand. And I'm just gonna go throughout and in a single layer, so just painting over the spot once, I'm gonna add this, like I'm just coloring it in or drawing it in. And I'm just referring to my image in two to figure out where this color might go. And I'm not worrying too much if I get outside of the lines. Again, this is just a sketch, just a fun practice image. Just kind of relax and enjoy creating a picture. And any mistakes lend to make the style a little, it's just fun for the style. So still look great. And if you have paint that kind of sits there, it could add a cool little um, shading on your painting, or you can kind of move it to make it go away. So we'll add like little darker areas, which is a nice stylistic look too. And if you don't want it, you can just kind of move the paint. And if you ever have too much paint it's coming out too dark or it's just too too much water you can always dab it on your towel so you can see it left like a little bit that had a little bit more water and so it left this little mark here and there 
And if you like that, that's great. And it can be fun to have that there. This is just a sketch. It's time for you to kind of relax and just kind of create and not worry about how things turn out. And if you missed any spots, don't worry, you can always come back and add it later. So clean off your brush and then go ahead and mix the milkweed yellow. Milkweed yellow is just the one color, the 2H Gamboge. Shake it up again. Add a couple drops so you have some to work with. And you're gonna wanna use the wettest, lightest of this color. So I'm gonna pick some up on my brush and then add quite a bit of water to make it wet and light in my palette. I'm gonna clean it off on my towel, pick up a little bit, dab it on my towel again, and then test it out on my paper. That looks pretty dark still, so I'm gonna pull a little bit more to the side. So adding water makes it less concentrated, the color, so it's lighter. Dab it off, test it out, and that looks a lot better, maybe just a tiny bit more color. Let's mix a little bit more in there. Check it on my paper again, that looks great. So I'll pick up some more, gently dab it onto my towel, and then I'm gonna add it to all of the flowers. Again, I'm gonna start on the left side, and if anything's still wet, just make sure you don't put your hand in it so it doesn't smudge. So I'm just gonna add that to all of the flowers. And when you have all the yellow added, go ahead and clean off your brush. And then let this dry and move on to step three. Step three, paint in milkweed red and orange. So you'll want to first mix the milkweed red and that's just two drops of 27H Vermilion Hue. Shake it up to make sure that the pigment's mixed in there. One, two, as I mentioned before, sometimes the pigment settles. And take a little bit of that, your brush, and take it to the side. It's too much. Take it to the side and add lots of water to it to get that wet light color. Dab it off onto your towel and clean it up because your brush might have a lot of pigment from that initial dip into this color here. And then take a little bit of that on your brush, dab it lightly on your towel, and then check it on your paper to see and test it out to see if it's the right color. I think that looks like a good color to me. And I'm gonna pick up a bunch of it, dab it lightly on the towel, and then add it to all the buds like you see in step three's image. So I'm just gonna go ahead and treat the buds as this one big shape these large buds here and it's a I have a bit too much water and that's why some areas a little wetter than others and dab it on my towel a little bit more and then I'm going to add it to these little buds here each one is an individual shape here and then I'm going to clean off my brush And then I'm going to mix the milkweed orange. So I want four drops of the 27H Vermilion Hue. I'm shaking it up again. One, two, three, four. And two drops of the 2H Cambodge. One, two. I'm gonna add a little bit of water, mix that up. And I'm gonna clean it off on my towel. So I don't have too much pigment. Pick up just a little bit, take it to the side, and add a bunch of water to get that wet light color. Dab it on my towel. Test it out on my test strip here. Looks like the right color. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a bunch, 
dab it lightly on my towel so I don't have too much water when I add it to my paper. And then I'm going to add it to the petals as you see in step three. And they're also, as a collective, called the corollas. Just kind of add it over all of those petals and take your time. And if you get it into the wrong area, if you think you do, that's fine. It's not a big deal. This is just a sketch. It's going to be a unique image. I find my painting is just a little bit different every time I paint, depending on my mood that given day. Your persona really come out in the painting, even though you're just doing a step-by-step -step instructional image. It's going to be your unique image. So I'm going to clean off your brush, let this dry, and move on to step four. Step four, paint in milkweed green and yellow. So this time we're gonna paint in a darker green. So we want to have something that's not super dark, but something that's not really light either. Take a little bit of the color in the middle here. You can add some water. Dab it on your towel and then test it out. And maybe a little darker. Test it out again. I like that. So I'm going to pick some more up, dab it on my towel, and then apply it to my painting to the leaves and the stems like you see in image four. And basically I'm just going to kind of paint it in the darker areas. And this does not need to be exact. This is really your painting again. So up to your interpretation as well as wherever you want that paint to go. Just make sure you preserve some of that lighter color underneath. When you have all the green added, go ahead and clean off your brush. And then pick up the driest, darkest version of the yellow. So you don't want to add any extra water because you want it to be fully concentrated. Test it out on your paper to make sure. Looks great to me. Then dab it lightly on your towel. And you want to add it to the upper flower parts or the coronas, which have the hood and the horn. And you want to preserve some of the other lighter color underneath. And it might be easier to refer to your large final reference image to figure out for placement. Uh, or you can just kind of add it in, like, it, like you did with the green, where you think it is appropriate. Just making sure to reserve some of that lighter color to give it some contrast and dimension. So just go ahead and go throughout and add that. If you need a finer tip on your brush, just make sure to roll it after picking up the paper or the paint from the palette, just kind of roll it on your towel to create that tip. And then you'll have a fine tip to add paint. And I just kind of gonna add it in the inside areas where it might be a little darker, referring to my image a little bit. But the placement does not need to be exact. It doesn't need to be the same exact placement as in your final reference image. When you've added all of the milkweed yellow, go ahead and clean off your brush, let this dry, and move on to step five. Step five, paint in the milkweed purple. So take six drops of the 27H Vermilion Hue. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. And four drops of the Indian Red, the 17H. One, two, three, four. And one drop of the 34H Turquoise Blue. Add a little bit of water, mix that up. I'm trying not to let it get into the edge of my palette too much because some of the other paint has kind of gone to the sides when I've moved it around between steps. So I'm gonna test this color out. It looks great. I'm gonna clean off my brush, pick up a little bit and add some water. Dab off my brush again. I clean it out. And then pick up a little bit of that and test it out to see if it's the right color. It looks pretty good to me. I'm going to pick it a little bit more up, dab it off on my towel so I don't have too much water when I apply it. And then I'm going to add it to the bottom of these buds like you see in step five's image. So it's just going along the bottom edges of those buds. And if you need, again, you can look at your larger final reference image. And the placement is really up to you. It's supposed to be individual. It does not need to be exact. just basically on the bottom. Then clean off your brush. And then add the driest, darkest milkweed orange. And some of my paint mixed in the palette a little bit, but I think this area is still the same milkweed orange here. So I'm gonna pick some up, adding just a tiny bit of water, dabbing off of my towel, and then I'll test it out to see if it's the right color. Looks good to me, so it looks very much so the same color. Pick up a little bit more, dab it off on my towel and making sure to turn my brush to get that nice fine tip. And then I'm just gonna add it to all the flower corollas and I'm just going to add it, preserving some of that color underneath. So not painting over the whole thing, kind of painting just on the lower edges and you refer to step five's image or your final reference image for placement. And just kind of adding that in and preserving that other color will create more dimension and depth to the image. And again, you don't need to match the reference image exactly. The paint sometimes will do what it wants to do and end up in a different spot. It all lends to create your perfectly imperfect painting. And when you've added all of that milkweed orange, go ahead and clean off your brush, let this dry, and move on to step six. Step six, paint in the milkweed green and red. So I want the driest, darkest milkweed green, and unfortunately, when I move my palette around, the colors mixed a bit, but I think I still have some the original color right here. If not, I can remix it. This keeps bleeding over, so I'll try it out and see. Actually, that looks good. It's very much so the same color still. It didn't bleed over too much. This yellow kind of flowed in. So I don't have to remix it, so I'm just gonna go and add it to the leaves and stems like you see in your final reference image and step six's image. And it's kind of just outlining and drawing over some of these lines. And pick up more whenever you need it, dabbing it off onto the towel. And again, just like before, it doesn't need to be exactly the same as the image in the basic general area. When you have all of the 
green added, go ahead and clean off your brush. And then I'm going to take a little bit more red. My palette has really mixed up a lot. But I still have some of that red here. So I'm going to take some of that, add a little bit of water to it, dab it off on my towel, and then I'm just going to add it to the top of the buds just to give them a little bit of a highlight. So just the tips. And again, not being super exact, just kind of adding it in. It's just a fun sketch. And then clean off your brush, let this dry, and move on to step seven. Step seven, add ink lines. So I like to start with the smallest micron, the 005, is a fine tip, just to redefine the lines. So maybe the paint landed in some areas that are a little bit of the outside. If you want to, you can redefine the lines drawing outside of where the paint landed. So now it's part of that. Conversely, you can just kind of add it on the inside and leaving that paint on the outside as a bleed. And it's kind of fun stylistic choice. So you can make this unique and decide what way you want that to look. But for the most part, you can follow your transfer lines and just kind of redraw those. So go ahead and go throughout and draw in the lines. If you need, you can refer to your final reference image or your transfer image if you can't see those lines anymore. Next, use the O1 Black Micron. Use that to thicken up the scientific name a little bit. And then I'm going to use it to thicken the lines for the bud tips, bud stems, and the flowers, and the flower stems. As you see in 7A and your final reference image. Lastly, use the 08 Black Micron first to thicken up the common name. And after you apply that, make sure to protect your image using your transfer image from smudges because this ink can't smudge until it's dry. And then use the 08 Black Micron to thicken some of the lines, so parts of the leaves and uh, shadow area edges. So some of these darker shadow area edges. And some of the flower parts that are in the front of the plant are just gonna be a little, stand out a little bit more and you're not gonna see the back ones as much. So if you make those lines a little thicker, it adds, it makes the image pop a little bit more. And you'll see that in your final reference image as well. So you can mimic those lines. Once you have all of those lines added, you are all done, or you can add more paint or ink lines wherever you like. Just let everything dry in between each color or each layer of ink. We're done, great job. You've created a unique painting that only you could do. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun creating your painting and had a chance to relax a little. Next, you have some options what to do with this painting. You can punch holes in it and add it to your sketchbook, frame it, gift it, also share it on our Facebook banner page. Check out the Nature Sketch Great website for future crates and sign up for our newsletter for regular updates.